The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. This evening, the DuPont Cavalcade brings you the story of the colonization of California, which was the work of a Franciscan friar, Junipero Serra. Our story of chemistry at the close of the program also takes you to California to tell you how a DuPont plant in the heart of the citrus fruit district helps make it possible for you to have the orange juice you enjoy at breakfast. If you've ever traveled past beautiful orange and lemon groves, you may have seen some things that look like balloons among the rows of trees. They really aren't balloons at all. As you'll hear a little later, they're life-saving devices for the valuable citrus crop and another good example of better things for better living through chemistry. Because the DuPont Company is eager to cooperate with anything that promotes safety, may we remind you that May 14th to 21st is National Tire Safety Week. Motorists are urged to help reduce accidents by replacing worn and unsafe tires with new, safe ones. And now as an overture, Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra play In a Monastery Garden.
Belmont Cavalcade moves forward. Off the coast of Spain in the classic serenity of the Balearic Islands, Miguel José Serra was born, November 24, 1713, at Petra, Mallorca. The Franciscan friars of San Bernardino prepared him for the religious life, and as a young man, he took his vows with the Order of St. Francis, adopting the name of Unipero after the gay-hearted disciple of St. Francis of Assisi. In 1749, Fra Unipero Serra prays with his aged Franciscan confessor, in a monastery sheltered in the towers and twilight of old Madrid as the Angelus bells chime over the city. Ad resurrectionis gloriam perdicavo, per eundem Christum dominum nostrum. Amen. And uh, now, as we were saying, my son, are you sure this plan is for the best? I have always wanted to go to New Spain and continue my apostolic labors in the missionary field, Padre. You are one of our order's leading professors, my son. A less proficient scholar might make a good missionary. But your acute mind is needed at the university. Padre, there are so many to do great things in the old world, and so few to do them in the new one. Uh, the natives of New Spain are our brothers. They need the light of education and truth as well as our people here. Uh, that cannot be denied. Well... You've decided wisely, my son. But tell me truly, Junipero, is it pure zeal for souls? Sometimes I suspect there is another zeal concerned, the zeal for adventure. Well, are not missionaries men of adventure, Padre? Eager to go forth to battle for... Battle? Franciscans are men of peace. But you did not let me finish, Padre. I mean the battle for understanding. Uh... The message of Christianity should be carried even to the wastelands of the earth. I know that you are right, my son. But the loneliness, how will you endure it? You who have so many attainments, your books, your music. That is something I must accept, Padre. Uh, uh, enter. Francisco. Junipero. And no one told me you were here. This is Francisco Paolo, Padre. My son. He studied under me at the university. We've been friends ever since. Why are you here in Madrid, Francisco? I came to tell the Padre something I had not meant you to hear yet. yet. I will go then. Stay. You'll learn sooner or later. I'm going to work in the missionary field of New Spain. The prior just told me. Excellent. That's wonderful news. I didn't expect you'd be overjoyed. After all, it means I won't see you again. You'd better tell him, Junipero. Well, what's all this? We're going to New Spain together, Francisco. You see, I, too, am going to be a missionary in the new world. After a tempestuous voyage from Cadiz, Junipero Serra and Francisco Paulo landed at the small but proud city of Veracruz, the gateway to New Spain. Serra traveled on foot inland to Mexico City. On the way, the sudden strike of a reptile crippled his leg, and he hobbled painfully into the lavish city of the Aztec civilization, then glittering with opulence and power. After working in the Sierra Gorda missions, where the natives came to idolize him, Junipero Serra traveled back to Mexico City, fired with a zealous dream. He stands before Carlos Francisco de Qua, the viceroy of New Spain. Be seated, Padre. It is not good for you to stand with your afflicted leg. Thank you, Your Excellency. You probably don't know these gentlemen. Don Pedro Faiz. My son. Gaspar de Portola. Padre. What is it you wish to see me about, Padre? Is it about the Peninsula Missions? Your presidency of the Mexican Missions has been well administered. For many years, I've labored in Mexico, Your Excellency. Now I would like to go to Alta California. California? As a matter of fact, Padre, His Gracious Majesty Charles III has commissioned me to conquer California in the name of Spain. 
Only this morning, Jose de Galvez, the Inspector General, and I discussed the matter. A military conquest, Your Excellency? Well, that would involve grave complications. There are you? certain petty aspects, wholly inconsiderable, of course. The complications following a military conquest are far from petty. And what does the Padre mean by that? Where a military rule is established, the natives vanish. Then, where are Spain's subjects? Simply, there are no subjects. Therefore, what is the good of annexation? I have heard, Padre, that you were a professor of philosophy at one time. I have also heard that logic belongs to the classroom. <laughs> Permit me to say in that event, sir, that your hearing is somewhat defective. Logic is reason. And reason must rule our minds. Padre, a soldier like myself knows only one kind of logic. That of the sword. Obviously, you have a point, Padre. What is it? Your Excellency, if your annexation of California is to have a permanent effect, conquest must be tempered with reason. Reason? The reasonability of civilizing the natives. The reasonability of lighting the lamp of Christian teaching and ideals in this land. You have a plan how this can be done, of course. I can establish missions for that purpose. That is an excellent idea, Padre. Together with the land expedition, we are dispatching a supply ship to meet the force in San Diego. And then a military conquest in the name of Spain. Uh, which one of these gentlemen is to command the soldiers, Your Excellency? Uh, Don Fais. And my friend Patula, however, is to supervise the expedition. And, Padre, we desire that you accompany the expedition, too. Well, Portola, we'll have Christian idealism with us on this expedition. <laughs> Your Excellency, let me make this clear. If you authorize this venture, Don Fahis is only to command his soldiers. The missions that I hope to establish will be under my authority. Too often the soldiers have undone the good work of the Padres. Have your way, Padre. But before we're through, you'll be glad enough of the sight of a Spanish uniform. I'll swear that. I have done now, Don Fais. But, Padre, what about your leg? Your Excellency, I am 56 years old. And it's true, I am a cripple. Many men would think it time to look back, perhaps, and dream of the past. But my life is only just beginning. It lies in California. Though the Viceroy insisted that Fra Junipero Serra traveled to California in a litter, the friar smilingly dismissed this convenience. It was a slow, painful journey over barren hills and through deep, treacherous valleys. Arriving in San Diego, the expedition found the supply ship anchored in the bay, the crew dying from scurvy. Through the ministrations of the friar, most of the crew were saved, and the ship returned south to bring back to San Diego new and much-needed supplies. In San Diego, Don Fais erected a military garrison while Sarah and Paru built the first mission in California and dedicated to San Diego de Acala. One afternoon, Don Fais finds Fra Winipero Serra walking in the mission garden. Yes, yes, it's all very well for us to dally in this garden, Padre. But I tell you, we're facing a serious problem. Why is anything wrong? Wrong? The supplies are almost gone. That supply ship must be at the bottom of the sea. It has never left Mexico at all. True. The San Antonio is long overdue. But we know it is coming back. The Viceroy would not fail us. It wouldn't be the first time an expedition has been left to starve in the wilderness. You take a dark view of things, my son. I'm responsible for this expedition, Padre. And for my men. I'm sick of this long waiting. If the ship isn't here by tomorrow... We start back to Mexico. Back to Mexico? But we are making such progress at the mission. That, that's my decision. You have lost all interest in the venture. Is that it? But, well, if it is so, it's because of your constant interference. Padre! Padre! That boy, coming in the gate now. You saved him from my men when I'd ordered him whipped. Do you think that sort of thing is good for my authority here, Padre? Padre, I want to tell you something now. Uh, no, Muta, my son. 
Uh, I am busy now. Some other time. I stay by gate. There. You see? He's hanging around to guard you against me. Don't you understand? That if you treated them with love and kindness, they would feel the same devotion to you. Love and kindness. They'll repay you with treachery. Well, I've had enough. Remember, Padre, tomorrow is the crisis. Either the San Antonio comes or we go. I shall stay here, Don Fahis. Alone? If need be. You'll perish. Will you wait two weeks? It's useless. The ship will never come now. We have supplies to last two weeks. You will wait, Don Fahis. It's sheer folly. Well, yes. But that's my last concession. Thank you, Don Fahis. And now then, uh, come here, Mutar, my son. Uh, what is it you wished to tell me a while ago? Fra Palu sent me to tell you news, Padre. But you said you were busy. Bless you for obeying me, my son. But what news? Fra Palu says sail is in bay. The ship! The ship has arrived! Oh, why didn't you tell me? You are so impulsive, Don Fahis. I told you the San Antonio would return to us. In the next year, San Diego flourished. Leaving Palu there in charge, Serra and Don Fais led an expedition north to the beautiful Monterey Peninsula, where Serra established the graceful San Carlos mission, and Don Fais built another garrison. But here, the brutality of the homesick, discontented soldiers caused an uprising among the Indians and an attack on the garrison. Don Fais comes to Serra's little cell at the mission. My men are having trouble holding those... Dogs back, Padre. You alone can help us. What would you have me do? Well, the Shastas have come to the mission courtyard. You tell them that they must submit to the white man's rule. They believe anything from you. You know why they rebelled, don't you? The brutality of your men. That's the whole cause of the trouble. What are you prepared to do about that? Padre, our very lives are threatened, and you quibble over such matters. You ask my help. No sooner do I gain the trust of these innocents than you betray it. I wonder what the Viceroy would say to that. We're a long way from the Viceroy. We're men alone in the wilderness. Here, there can be but one law. And you are that law. I am. Then I must go to Mexico City. Settle this question with the Viceroy. Padre, but you're too old for such a journey. You... Furthermore, I'll refuse you supplies and an escort. The natives will supply me. And I've had enough of soldiers. Then you won't say one word to avert disaster to the garrison? Have you done now? What if I have? If you have. Well, well then let us go to the courtyard at once. Tell me, Don Fahis, you are not at all happy in California, are you? How could a man like me be happy here? My wife and family, those I love most dearly are in Mexico City. You would be happy if your family were here? Yes, yes, if I could be settled somewhere. Oh, what's the good of this talk? I'll always be a soldier. Well, you've been a good one. A little headstrong at times, but nevertheless, a good soldier. Come, let us go and talk to the Shasta chief. Now, we mustn't keep him waiting. <laughs> Pasca, my son. What is your trouble? That's no way to talk Be to them. Be silent, please. It is my way. Come, Pasca. Tell me why you and your braves resist us. Don Fais send soldiers into camp. We've got to have a military rule in the Californias. As soon as Pasca realizes that, we'll send no more soldiers to his camp. We no like soldiers and force. What will you do, Pasca? We fight. We too can fight. Spanish soldiers won't put up with this kind of insult. Uh, just a moment. Pasca, will you return to your camps peacefully if Don Fahis asks you to? No. He say he send soldiers to Shasta camp. That is absolutely final? Yes. Then we'll settle our differences of opinion regarding the colonization of California here and now, Don Fahis. I'll show you my way is better. Vasca. Yes, Father. I have a plan whereby we can all live peacefully in Monterey. 
come to us here at the San Carlos Mission. We will teach you how to plant seeds and grow food in the valleys. We will teach you how to build homes and how to live good lives. No soldiers? No one but the Franciscan friars at the mission. They will never speak a harsh syllable to you. Hello, Padre. No soldiers. Just a tribe like words of Padre. We will do. Then we shall have peace. Just us go now. Bring message to camp. Now, you have nothing to fear, Don Fahis. Well, I must admit the way you dealt with those dogs wouldn't be my method. It did have an effect, though. Are you still determined to return to the Viceroy in Mexico City? Certainly. Be sure and tell him that I failed, and your missions in this land are successful. You will relish that. When the moon is full tonight, Palu and I start southward on foot. Why must you always be upset about something, Don Fahi? Don't worry. You see... Well, don't worry. Junipero Serra's visit with the Viceroy in Mexico City was a triumphant one. But when adulations were showered on the aged friar, he began planning to return to California to the missionary settlements at Santa Clara, San Buenaventura, Santa Barbara, and the Mission Dolores. Thus were the seeds of civilization sown on our western coast. Several months passed. It is a soft spring evening when the two old friars, Serra and Palu, returned to Monterey. And the mission courtyard at San Carlos is filled with joyful settlers and natives. Welcome back, Padre. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Don Fahis. My friend Paolo and I, little Muta, have looked forward to this homecoming for many, many months. Shall we proceed to the mission church? Your congregation is waiting to greet you. Yes. I'll go ahead, Sarah. Come, Muta. Yes, Padre. I'm glad I made the journey, Don Fahis. Throughout California, I saw thriving mission settlements and great cultivated valleys. My years of labor in this land have not been in vain. We have a peaceful civilization. How is Mexico City? As graceful and proud as ever. Did you see the Viceroy? The Viceroy is a very astute man. We uh, discussed your case thoroughly, Don Fahis. I don't doubt it. Well, Padre, you've had your way. You've won and I've lost. The Viceroy will probably dismiss me in disgrace. The Viceroy gave me this letter to you. Here. Thank you. Uh, read it before we go inside. But, well, I can't believe it. The Viceroy has made me governor of California. Precisely. And your wife and your family are coming to live with you in the governor's palace. Whether this is your work or not, Padre, I, I don't deserve this appointment after the way I've opposed you. Now I know why you're named Junipero. Yes? Junipero. The friar who even gave his cloak to a thief who robbed him of the sandals thinking the poor fellow needed it. A man who heaped coals of fire on his adversary's head, as you've done to me. Ah, the mission bells and the singing. It is a good omen to hear them in the valleys of California, Don Fahis. A sign of happiness and peace. Come, let us go in the church together. Give me your hand.
After a lifetime of service in his beloved California, Fra Junipero Serra died August 28, 1784, in his bare little cell at the San Carlos Mission. As the mission bells tolled slowly, sorrowing natives and settlers left their fields to pay their last respect to a humble friar whose estate consisted of a worn-out Franciscan habit and an old wooden cross. But Junipero Serra has left a heritage of civilization on the western shores of this country. His colonization of California is an immemorial chapter in American history. This evening, Dupont salutes Fra Junipero Serra as one of our great pioneers in the cavalcade of America. Following colonization came cultivation and crops and, inevitably, insect pests. You've often heard of Japanese beetles, potato bugs, and locusts. But have you ever heard of scale? This pest, called scale, is an insect which constantly threatens trees bearing citrus fruits such as oranges and lemons, grapefruit, limes, and even avocados or alligator pears. But chemists have developed a way to combat the scale insect, and that is why the DuPont Company has a plant located at El Monte, a pretty little town in the midst of Southern California's citrus fruit district at the foot of the Sierra Madre Mountains. The reason DuPont maintains a plant there may be seen all around Southern California. Throughout the region are citrus and avocado groves laden with beautiful fruit. These trees are mighty important to California because oranges and lemons alone have a value of around $70 million each year. So you can see the groves that produce them are extremely valuable property. But it's no cinch to grow such fruits. And one thing that makes it difficult is that insect pest called scale. These tiny insects aren't as dramatic as grasshoppers or locusts. They don't get into the newsreel movies, but they're awfully tough enemies just the same. The scale is a sucking insect. Unless controlled, scale spoils the appearance and quality of the fruit, weakens the trees, and finally may kill them. But chemistry solved this problem with a product that's sure death to scale insects. It's called hydrocyanic acid, sold by DuPont under the trademark Hydrocy. And that's what is made in the up-to-date little plant at El Monte. The method of use is fumigation. The trees are covered with a canvas cloth in tent fashion. They look something like balloons. Then the Hydrocy is introduced under the tent as a warm gas, where it quickly diffuses to all parts of the tented tree and kills the scale insect. After fumigation, when the tent is removed, the hydrocy completely disappears, leaving the fruit and trees in perfect condition. The California fruit grower may thank chemistry for discovering a way to beat these insect enemies. And next time you drink a glass of orange juice or enjoy a nice piece of lemon pie, you too may give a thought to the chemist's contribution. Thus, we have one more example of how the DuPont Company is helping to provide Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. Benjamin Franklin, first American citizen, will be the subject of our broadcast when next week at the same time, DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.